Hi there, we're just going to do a short house calculation based on the 2018 Canadian Electrical Code. And we'll walk through how to find all the wattages for the demand towards your main calculation and also how to find the size of the main breaker and wire. Also, we'll look at the ground wire size. Okay, so using A200, we're going to first find the demand for what's called our basic load using the area of the home. In this case, the home was eight by 12. It had a main floor and upstairs and a basement. And these were different sizes. So you have to be careful that way. What we do is find the area of the main floor, just multiply eight by 12 meters gives us 96 square meters. We use 100% of that towards the total living area of the home. The upstairs was eight by 10. We use 100% of that 80 meters squared. And then the basement was eight by 12, uh, which gave us 96 square meters, but we only use 75% of the basement towards the total living area. This gave me 248 square meters. And what I'm doing is I'm going to break that into groups of 90 meters squared because the code tells us to use for the first 90 meters squared, we're going to have a demand factor of 5,000. And then for each group of 90 meters squared after that, we're going to add 1,000 per group. So 248 square meters divided by 90 gives me 2.76 groups. Round that up to three groups because it doesn't matter if it's a part of a group or a whole group, it still gets the full 1,000. So 5,000 for the first 90 meters squared, an additional 2,000 for the next two groups, my basic load would come to 7,000 watts. A200, 1A, item three, sends us to rule 6211183 for the baseboard heat. And remember that baseboard heat would include a heater in your sauna. In this case, I had 20,000 watts total baseboard heat. When I go to 62118, it tells me to take the first 10,000 at 100% and the balance at 75%. This would leave me with a demand for baseboard heat at 17,500, which I'm going to take towards the main service. A 201A item three dictates that we take 100% of the air conditioning uh, demand towards the, the service. So 5,000 watt air conditioner at 100% means I take 5,000 watts towards the main service. Eight dash 201A four speaks to what we do for an electric range. Remember this is the demand factor towards the main service. There's a different rule for the actual branch circuit calculation. In this case, I have a 16,000 watt electric range. The rule tells me to take the first 12,000 at 50%, which is 6,000, and the balance at 40%. So we had 4,000 left over, gives me an additional 1,600. So I take 7,600 watts towards the main service. This page adds up to 37,100 watts. And I carry that forward to page two. A200, 1A5 speaks about a couple things that we have in this house. One is a tankless hot water heater, 2000 watts. And we're going to take that at 100%. Remember, a hot tankless hot water heater, even if it was under 1500 watts, it would still fall in this rule and not in the catch all rule, so we'd take it at 100%. This rule also talks about pools and spas and hot tubs. In this example, we had a pool heater, 5000 watts. That's going to go towards the demand at 100%, so 5000 watts will be added. 8-201A6 is where we find the demand information for an electric vehicle charger. This was a 30 amp charger times 240 will give me my watts. 
and that worked out to be 7,200 watts. We take that at 100% towards the main service. The last rule is what we call the catch-all rule, 8201A7. These are all the loads that haven't been mentioned so far. They don't have a special rule in the rules before. Now, this catch-all rule does specify that these loads would need to exceed 1500 watts to be included. So this 1500 watt microwave does not get included and that's why I've crossed it out. I have a 6000 watt dryer, a 20 amp 120 volt water pump, and we just use Watt's law, I times E, to figure out that that's 2400 watts. A hot water tank, which is different than the hot water heater, in that this is a storage tank, it falls into the catch-all rule, and then we have a 1680 watt sump pump. And that is above, it exceeds 1500. So we're gonna include all of these things except for the microwave. I can add them all up. And then the catch-all rule tells me to take those things at 25%. This will put a demand of 3,395 watts towards the main service. I add all of these up, including the previous page, which was carried forward here, gives me 54,695 watts. A typical home in Canada is fed with 240 volts. So I divide that wattage by 240 volts. And my calculated load then is 227.9 amps. I'm going to carry that forward to the next page so we can look for the wire and the breaker. Our calculated load at 227.9 amps, we can go using 4-004 subrule 22, we can go to table 39, use that calculated load to try to find our wire and breaker size. Now I want to also mention that sometimes table 39 um, gives us a larger number than what would be the minimum. So we're always going to compare the results of table 39 with the results of table 2 or 4 and table 13, and I'll get to those in a minute. In table 39, what they do is give you a calculated load column. So you look in that calculated load column for a number that's greater than your calculated actual calculated load was. So for aluminum, I would have to go to a 357. For copper, I'd have to go up to 352. That forces me to use a 600 MCM size aluminum wire and a 400 amp breaker or a 400 MCM copper wire, still a 400 amp breaker. Now my load was only 227.9. So I'm going to go and look in table two for copper, in table four for aluminum, and see if I can find a wire that will just carry that load. When I go to table four, look at aluminum in the 75 degree column because our breaker and our equipment is, is limited to 75 degrees, I see that I could actually use a 300 MCM wire. That would be good for 230 amps. My load's only 227.9. That would carry my load. Or if I'm looking for copper, I would go to table two, 75 degree column again, and I could actually see that a 250 MCM copper wire would be good for 255 amps. So either one of those two wires would work. Then what I do is I go to table 13 and I see what size breaker I can use on these wire opacities. And in either case, I'm allowed to use a 250 amp breaker. When I compare what table 39 had to offer to what tables 2, 4, and 13 have to offer, it would be a less expensive installation if I could find a 200 amp breaker and a 200 amp panel and use a, 200, sorry, a 250 amp breaker and use either copper or aluminum. And um, it would be a lot cheaper than going with the 400 amp service. And that would be perfectly fine, still covers my calculated load. 
Once we decide on a wire size, we can then look at 6-1126. It says that if we're going through the roof and we're going to use a mask, the mask must be rigid steel and a minimum trade size of 63. Then 10-1141 tells us that the grounding conductor needs to be a minimum size of number six copper or number four aluminum. And there is an exception. We could go smaller for that ground size as long as the uh, ground wire is not smaller than the current carrying conductors. In this case, our current carrying conductors are much larger, so we better go with the minimum size of number six or number four. Hope that's helpful.